This bill will be. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I call David Clendon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And in keeping with the general theme of this debate this evening, um, I just stand to restate the Greens' very reluctant support for this bill. Um, it is a we take no pleasure in it. Our, our very capable and experienced colleague, uh, Eugenie Sage, sat on the select committee and came back to the caucus um, recommending that we do support this bill, which previously we'd only agreed to support to the select committee, that we support it to further stages. Uh, and we accepted that recommendation basically because we felt that any other course of action would actually worsen the situation of the people in Kaipara and particularly the people of Mangafai. It's not a happy situation, but the financial and social situation could only get worse if we don't do something in this parliament to resolve the, um, the shambles, the mess that has been created. So the commentary of the bill refers to um, a number of irregularities that must be validated. That's very genteel language, which is entirely appropriate, I suppose, in a, a written uh, piece of legislation. But it actually is very, it, it understates the scale of the sheer incompetence, the illegal activity, the, um, the unlawful um, activity that was occurring over a number of years. And it's very unfortunate. The, one can get a sense of the scale of it by looking at, it's an odd bill in the sense that the substance of the bill, um, a dozen or 14 or so clauses, over five or six pages. The other 20-odd pages of the bill are the preamble, where uh, the, the shortcoming, the failures of the, uh, of the Council are documented. The words, uh, the Council failed to comply, or variations on that, that phrase appears no fewer than 45 times. It is a litany of error. It is a it's a disgrace to those people who are on the Council, and it must be said that some of the disgrace must be shared by some of the entities whose task it was to, be, to have an eye on what, exactly what was going on in that situation over a number of years. I'd have to say the committee has brought back a much better bill. There have been some significant changes made, which I think have tipped the balance for us in terms of enabling us to support it. And of course, key to those would be um, clause three in the purpose clause, uh, the deletion of the paragraph G, which would otherwise, um, the purpose clause, um, it outlines sort of a veil of legality that's going to be drawn over the illegal acts so the, and the incompetence of the council over time. And the original drafting of the bill sought to include a catch-all, a genuine get out of jail free card, as it was called earlier. That would have um, the language was something along the lines of validating any other actions or omissions, and not only would that be unreasonable in the context of this bill, but it could have set a fairly dangerous precedent, an expectation that all would be forgiven. A great deal is being forgiven in this bill, but it 's important that we do retain the right. Sorry to interrupt the honourable member. The time has come for, uh, for me to leave the chair for the dinner break. This debate is interrupted. I shall resume the chair at 7.30.